They're orange, they're bouncy, and they're bound in your way. Coming up next. Hello once again, model builders and Warhammer gamers. Welcome back to another great video where today we are going to be looking at the Gloom Spike Git Squig Hoppers. Now, if you remember from last week, we took a look at the original five, and now Games Workshop has re released this box in a pack of 10. And you can also build them in another way too, which will really help out your games. So, without further ado, if you enjoy these great videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. And don't forget to check out our great website, www.monster-hobbies.ca, if you need any wargaming figures. And come out and play with us on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. right here in Monster Hobbies, High River, Alberta, Canada. So now, without further ado, let's hop right to it. Haha! <laughs> and go down to the bench and see our great squig hoppers. In our last video, we took a look at the Night Goblin Squig Hoppers from way back when, Warhammer Fantasy. And this time around, we are going to be looking at the re-release of the Gloom Spike Git Squig Hoppers, which of course is from Warhammer Age of Sigmar from 2019. Now this model can be built either as the Squig Hoppers in a unit of 10, or as a unit of 5 Boingrot Bounders, as shown on the back of the box. Of course, this would leave you with five of the squig hoppers left over. And I actually have a plan to build it like this and then use the old five squig hoppers from last time and add the new five from this kit to make up a unit of 10 squig hoppers with a second unit of five Boingra bounders. Now, the nice thing about the back of the box is it gives you all the Citadel colors so that you can try to duplicate these amazing looking models in the way that the Ard Boys did in their paint jobs. The first thing we get to look at in this great model kit are, of course, the full color instructions from the Games Workshop, which are always really nice. And here you can also see the 3D printed shadowed version of the models. So as noted on the box, you can build these as squig hoppers. And in order to do so, you need to follow steps 1 through 12. Or you could build them as the Boingrot Bounders. And for that, you need to follow step number 1, and then 13 to 23. Here we have step number 1, and it does say to follow step 1 for all variants. And as you can see, we get 2 of 1A, and then it shows 1A going together, and 1B. And this is the result you want at the end. And then down here, we have... 1C and 1D, and that's the result you want to have there, and followed by 1E and 1F. Yes, it is 6. I didn't mean to mislead you. If you take a look at 1G, that's showing the one side of this, and then 1H is 1G being glued to the base, and that's where you get the finished model there. And then here is 1I. 1I. It only had 1I. Anyway, <laughs> There's one eye, and then one J is one eye going to the base. So again, you do get 10 different models for the squigs, two of each style of squig. So here we have all the squig body components, except for the faces, and this is what all 10 would look like once assembled. Now we begin the sequence for steps two to 12 for the regular squig hoppers. And here it does say it has interchangeable parts. So that's always a plus. Here's a whole series of the faces for each of the squigs, followed by their jaws and fronts. Actually, these are mouths, so their mouths, and then their jaws and faces all going together. You can see just how many we do get in here in step number three. Now, once we have our squigs all assembled, we start to get into the night goblins themselves, or actually the gloom spike gets, as they're known now. So here's the left and right sides of their legs and lower torsos going together with our hands gluing in and, uh, yeah, hands and feet. And then down here in step five, we have each of their different heads. And of course, you get two of each, so there's your ten there, followed by their daggers and knives and anything else they're carrying as they're bouncing away on these squigs. Step seven shows our squig hopper boss being glued together. Now this is the body from step four, and then we have a dagger going up here with a hand, and he would glue up to the top of that squig. And then there's more of his components going in here, 
including the face of the squig down here in step 7C. And step 7D shows the face of the squig going together. This looks like the one with the little horn and the half moon bottom piece. So the squig rider, once he's done, our squig hopper boss will in fact look like this. Next on the agenda is squig hopper number one. And again, we have the body from step four and the face from step five gluing together with another knife hanging out the side. Then we put the inner mouth section into our squig as well as the head up top. And once it's all complete, he will look nice like this. Squig hopper number two starts here in step nine, actually continues on to the next page. Once again, we get to glue our goblin up to the top and you can see him holding on here for dear life. And he's also got a weapon, which he's swinging in the air as this squig is bounding through the skies. In 9C, we get the face of the, or the mouth of the squig going in and then the face popping up over top for our final result of this squig right here. Squig hopper number three, you want to build two of these models. So again, you've got the grot on the top, as they're now known, and then his arm there, the mouth of the squig popping in place, and the face, and then you're done here. Next, we have squig hopper number four, which again consists of a goblin going up top, and then a weapon in his hand, the mouth going in on the squig, the face over top of the mouth, and our finished result here. Finally, we've got squig hopper number five, which of course, again, you glue up two of these. And here you can see the grot going on the top and he's holding a little sickle, it looks like. And then the mouth goes in place. Now, one thing I noticed here, there is a paintbrush. So I assume you're supposed to paint inside the mouth before you glue the head on or the face on. And that's of course what they want you to do so that you don't accidentally just have a gray mouth sitting inside. And then you've got your night goblin there. One thing about all these, even though this looks a bit tedious in the instructions, is that these squigs are highly detailed and multiple pieces, so you can really get in and do a nice paint job in here. Whereas with the older versions of the Night Goblin squig hoppers, they were all one piece. So that's the nice part about the new kit, is that you have multiple choices. One thing that I really love about the full color instructions included in this kit is that they give you all the paint callouts for your bases, your layers, your shades, your edges, and even your dries in here in order to make your model look just as great as the Ard Boys team at Games Workshop can paint theirs. And now from build sequence 13 to 23, we get the Boingrot Bounders. And what makes these different from the Squig Hoppers is that these are the goblins that are carrying the lances. So we begin our build with cleaning up our mouths on the inside. <laughs> Use lots of toothpaste. <laughs> and then constructing the faces with the big teeth in place for our squigs. And steps 15, 16, and 17 all pertain to the Night Goblins being glued into place. I keep calling these Night Goblins, they are actually Gloom Spike Gits. So our Gloom Spike Git Bounder Boss here. This is the steps in showing how he goes together. And of course, again, he's being glued onto the top, just above the mouthpiece being glued down here. But as you can see, he's got the lance in the one hand here. And then, like I was saying just a second ago, you've got the mouth gluing in place. Then the two sides of the head. Again, this is the one with the uh, moon metal, so that it looks like the squig's face is a crescent moon. That's sort of a gloom spike gets goblin -y kind of thing. And then here you have the face gluing on over top of the mouth with our boss with his big lance up there. And your final result of your build should look like this. Here's the build sequence for our Boingrot Bounder number one. And you build one of him. So that would be the guy right beside the boss. And then here you've got the git going together up here with again his lance. And then as we move down, the mouth goes in here. And of course we have to paint that before we glue the face on. And then this is the result you want right here. Step number 20 shows Boingrot Bounder number two, and you build two of this model. And again, you've got your git on the top, 
and then his lance down here. Turning the page over, we have the inner mouth going on there, and then our face, and that's the result you want at the end. Boingrot bounder number three, again you want two of these. Now wherever it says two of them, that is if you don't use the big boss on these guys. If you actually get another box, you can build a unit of 20 of these or 10 of these or whatever. So the guys in the second box would be the build two times because you don't need a boss twice. But anyway, what you have here is the get going on top again, the lance, the mouth, the face down below and your final result for Boingrot Bounder number three. Here we have Boingrot Bounder number four. And again, we get on the top, the lance, the mouth, the face, and that's the result you want at the end. Our final Boingrot Bounder, Mr. Number five here, glues in two pieces, going on the top with the lance, the inner mouth, the face, and that is the result you want at the end. Once we have our models fully assembled, this is of course the way in which we paint them. And again, you can see a different paint call out. We've got some Steel Legion Drab, Agrath Earthshade, Karak Stone, and that's going all on the Lance. Uh, the squigs again are painted in Corn Red, Druchi Violet, Wazdaka Red, and Squig Orange over the top. But again, all the colors are right here, and these look pretty fantastic. These models also came with the War Scrolls for the unit printed inside the instruction sheet. However, I would check with that Gloom Spike Gets book and maybe not go using these. Now this model kit comes with four parts sprues and it also comes with 32 millimeter bases. The original Gloom or Night Goblin Squig Hoppers were meant to go on 25 millimeter bases. So if you're doing the same conversion I am by using the old models, you have to get the bigger bases in order for them to be consistent with the newer models here. So this is our first parts tree and I'll bring it up to the camera. And of course you can see again, Games Workshop is up to their usual high detailed, really nice looking models on here. This does have a, uh, date on here of 2019 that's what i'm trying to say look at the faces on the squigs these are quite a lot better detailed than our original squig hoppers although they're still not bad but like there's a you know solid face made out of one sculpt whereas here you have multiple faces multiple poses and sculpts again this is amazing there's that crescent moon looking face for your leader of either your bounders or your hoppers look at all the jaws on here these are really ferocious looking teeth very nicely done even on the back side you've got the goblin faces here all looking fantastic very nicely done very great work from games workshop now i just noticed that even though you do get four parts trees they're actually repeated twice so you're getting three little cages like this um, three of those twice so two are connected and two are split so basically four <laughs> but at any rate doesn't matter because here again we have that amazing detail you have the legs and up here they're jumping through the mushrooms and jumping off different things which i guess is how these squigs would work However, I do like my original guys with the metal rod, like they're really flying through mid-air with nothing to support them underneath. Especially if I paint that rod like a black color or something that is quote-unquote invisible. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, there they are. And you can see the squig bodies are quite different from the One Piece originals. These ones have a triangular hole in here in which you can put any leg combination in with any of the squigs. And again, the detail on here is fantastic. So I've got to give that once again to Games Workshop for making excellent models. Well, I hope you enjoyed our look at the Gloom Spike Get Squig Hopper model kit from the Games Workshop. And if you've built this model in the past, please let us know down in the comment section below how you liked it and how you feel it in your armies. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where we got to see the Squig Hoppers, the latest version from Games Workshop, as well as a couple of my older models. And if you like these videos, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to this channel. 
pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you're the first ones to see it. And check out our website, www.monster-hobbies.ca. And once again, I invite you to come play war games with us in High River, Alberta, Canada at Monster Hobbies, 7 o'clock p.m. And until next time, everybody, happy bouncing. <laughs>